Obviously, there's a huge political brouhaha over the Keystone Pipeline. Got delayed, got rejected. It's not going through. But there might be a different different pipeline that might get that Canadian uh, fuel source down to the Gulf Coast. Tom Fowler is here with details on this one. So, Tom, tell us all about this one. Maybe it may be a, uh, an alternative pipeline solution. I'll put it well, that yeah, way. Yeah, it's actually two pipelines, technically. It's taking an existing pipeline that goes from the Houston area up to Cushing, Oklahoma, which is sort of this key oil hub in Oklahoma, uh, reversing that and expanding it. And then another pipeline that goes uh, from Cushing to a place just near Chicago uh, called Flanagan and expanding that one as well. This is Enterprise Products Partners. They're here in Houston and uh, Enbridge Energy out of Calgary. And the idea is basically they don't have the same issues as Keystone because Enbridge already has about two and a half million barrels of oil of Canadian uh, tar sands that they move across the border through existing pipelines. So it's really a matter of them just expanding pipelines that are already in the U.S., and and moving the stuff that they already have here so a lot a lot fewer hassles for this these projects but but it does sound uh, somewhat inconsistent so i just just because i mean ultimately the concerns that environmentalists had with the keystone pipeline was that this was a very dirty uh, fuel uh if this is going to expand the flow of that what's what's the difference here it's it's, it's why is this going to be an easy easy sell whereas the other one not well, it's easier in that they don't have to go through the State Department review, and that's really uh, where they uh, they got held up. I mean, this you're right, they, these pipelines, Keystone really is all about oil sands. It's about an effort to to block development of the oil sands. It, um, you know, you have pipelines that like this that are built across the country every few years. It, so there's really nothing unusual about the pipeline. They go through uh, sensitive areas and, and they get permitted and so forth. But really, it's, you're right, it is about the Keystone, uh, about the uh, oil sands. These, This would still be car- covering oil sands, uh, carrying oil sands uh, crude, which could have the same issues. But in the environmental community, though, hasn't been as aware of it because it, it didn't rise to the top because you didn't have that same level of uh, a requirement. These guys just have to go through U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which just looks at engineering and environmental permits, and then the uh, the FERC, which just looks at the rates. So it's a, a fewer hurdles to jump through, a lot less politicized. Yeah. Now, Tom, you said that uh, they have the existing pipeline, that can, we have the map up right now, that goes from Cushing down to the Gulf Coast. They're just going to reverse the flow of that. Is it is it as easy? Uh, are all pipelines the same? Or do you oh, have to no, build different n- pipelines not at all. I mean, this, is, um, qu- this uh, pipeline that we're talking about, the existing one that they're reversing, uh, it, it does about uh, 400,000 barrels going north right now. To get it to handle 400,000 barrels of the heavier crew, they actually have to add pumping stations. And then they're going to build a parallel line next to it on the same right of way that could take another 450,000. That's where you get this 850,000 barrels coming coming south out of Cushing. So no, it's if you're handling heavier crude, you just need a lot more horsepower to, to actually push it down the line. Now, did this plan emerge before the Keystone, before the Keystone thing blew up, is this sort of in a response to Keystone, or were they just working on this on their own, completely different? Completely this separate? this has been in the works for a while, and actually, this really doesn't preclude Keystone. There's probably there is there's enough oil production in from Canada and the U.S. that could hand that both of these pipelines could stay full, and that's probably what is going to happen. You're probably still going to see the southern leg of Keystone from Cushing to Houston or to Port Arthur, rather, Texas, get built. But this is a project that's been in been talked about for a, a year, more than a year, actually. There's, these companies all have these you know have different uh, different customers that are trying to get their product to the same place. So this this has been in the works works for a while. It probably it might have been helped a little bit by Keystone's difficulty. It basically means they're probably going to be on up and running a little bit earlier than them. Uh, you know, Tom, Tom, one of the issues I understand with the direction of the pipelines and, and the, these plans is the is the is the kind of glut, the bottle uh, neck that exists at Cushing. Can you speak mm-hmm. to, to that a little bit and how this helps to resolve that in some way? Sure. Well, r- right now, basically, when you when you're you know, when you're adding another, uh, I guess it's going to be a total of about yeah, 850,000 barrels a day coming out of Cushing just from this one project. That's gonna that's gonna leave it. Excuse me. That's gonna alleviate it uh, quickly. And Keystone's gonna follow with about I think they're gonna be 700,000 barrels coming out of Cushing as well. So essentially, the you've had lower prices at Cushing, which is the sort of the main. When everyone whenever we're quoting U.S. oil prices, it's the Cushing price, and that's been trailing behind Brent, which is the overseas international oil price. They're probably gonna come a lot closer together once these projects are actually up and running but that's that's still a good you know uh, we're talking about it for the full capacity about 2014